Hello, my name is Wart Appletons and I'm the project manager of OBIS. And I wish to thank you for the opportunity to present OBIS to you at this important meeting. Unfortunately, I'm not able to, I was not able to join you, so I'm giving this presentation through this video. To start with a few numbers, the OBIS consists of four 6 million species observations, more than 4 million sampling events, more than 3 million sampling stations, of 170,000 marine species, and it integrates more than 1,900 databases in one central global database. The data were provided by 500 data providers in 56 countries, and at the moment, 1,000 papers have cited OBIS, and about 10 papers are added to this per month. We have also recently been uh, mentioned in the United Nations General Assembly resolution as uh, which appreciated our contribution to marine scientific research. OBIS started in, under the Census of Marine Life in 2000 as the Data Repository and Information Dissemination System. But after the census, OBIS was adopted by the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission of UNESCO in June 2009 by the 25th session of the Assembly. That was because the knowledge of the ocean's biodiversity is of such importance to national and global environmental issues that the responsibility for its continuing success should be assumed by governments. So why IUC? Well, IUC, having now 147 member states, is the UN focal point for ocean science, ocean observations and services, data information exchange, and capacity building, and is recognized under the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea as a competent international organization for marine scientific research and transfer of marine technology. So how does OBIS work? As I said, we have 500 data providers. They are connected to a bit more than 20 OBIS nodes, which collect the data from data providers and do some QC and data processing. One of those regional OBIS nodes is the Asian Center for Biodiversity, being responsible for Southeast Asia, or Sea OBIS. The international OBIS then harvest those OBIS nodes, do the integration and number of QC and indexing and provides that information, that integrated information through its web portal, building some products and statistics, and provide access to the data through web services and data download and SQL data access. So at the moment, uh, we have about 1 million observations and records per year from areas within the exclusive economic zones. And 20% of the data in OBIS is from areas beyond national jurisdiction. So about 7.5 million records, but 78,000 species, of which 14,500 are exclusively occurring in A, B, and G. The light green color represents fish. So 50% of the records in OBIS are fish records. But as you can see, there's a lot more taxonomic groups represented in OBIS. If you look at one of those summary maps that we produce is, in this case, the Hilbert index or the number of species expected in a random sample of 50 records in OBIS. You can clearly see that Southeast Asia or the coral triangle, uh, often called, is very biodiversity rich. Everything that's dark blue means there's more than 48 to, to, to 50 species in a random sample of 50 records in OBIS, so that's a very, very high biodiversity. Although the number of records in OBIS in Southeast Asia is very poor, so there's definitely a huge gap in OBIS. If you look at the number of IUCN red list species or threatened species, the endangered, the critically endangered and the vulnerable species, then again Southeast Asia comes up as an area that should receive special importance, special attention. 
looking at the map of the number of potential extinct species, those are those are species of which we have more than more than ten records, but has no longer been observed in the last fifty years. And again, there are some spots in Southeast Asia where there's at least more than thirty species that are never been that are never observed anymore in the last fifty years. So OBIS, now, especially now being part of IOC UNESCO, contributes to a number of international processes. There are assessments as part of the CBD, as part of the uh, United Nations World Ocean Assessment, as part of the Global Environment Facility, the Transboundary Water Assessment, and OBIS is mentioned in the documentation of IPBES as an important source of information. We're contributing to Future Earth, to Goose and to Geobon in defining essential variables in a bond on a box and in building indicators that determine or that can detect change and trends in marine species diversity. The areas beyond the national jurisdiction and deep sea is getting more and more attention under UNCLOS, so we have we are establishing collaborations with the International Seabed Authority and with INDEEP in building a deep sea OBIS node. But also the regional, re, the regional fisheries bodies of FEO and the vulnerable marine ecosystems is a process we support, as well as the identification of ecological and biologically significant areas under the CBD. To give you an example of one of those contributions to the EPSA process, we are providing those summary statistics. And in this case, th there was a, an EPSA workshop in, uh, in uh, the Caribbean and uh, so Southern Atlantic, where the area in, offshore of Brazil appeared to be very high in terms of biodiversity uh, in, in Obis and was also selected as, as a candidate EPSA area. So this is the the current status of the EPSAS. Uh, this is for OBIS a very important uh, process where the application of data in OBIS has been useful. I'd like also to, uh, I'd like to mention to you the, the cooperation agreement between UNESCO and the Association of South Asian, Asian Nations in the area of health of the coasts and oceans. I think this is also an important framework in which we could establish a closer collaboration between Asian, Asia and, and, and OBIS. Although we have already have a good uh, relationship with the Biodiversity Center, uh, which is hosting the, the South Asian, Southeast Asia OBIS node. However, it would be good if we could increase collaboration within the region. In the, on this map, you, I show you the number of uh, institutions that contribute data to OBIS. And as you can see, there's still a large gap in Southeast Asia. Things that we are also very active in and which we could do in, in Southeast Asia region is capacity development. We've been training scientists and data managers here in the project office of OBIS in Belgium. And we've been training people also from your region uh, in data cleaning and data formatting, publishing their data, providing uh, tools for data access, making maps and graphs of their data, doing some data analysis. Those training courses have been very successful and uh, it would be good if those can be repeated in your region. One of the possibility, possible mechanisms is through the Ocean Teacher Global Academy. This is the training program of IOC and we are currently setting up regional training centers as part of Ocean Teacher. At the moment one candidate is in Malaysia and there's also one in China. And those regional training centers all use the same online platform 
for training for sharing training material. The advantages is it also allows multiple languages. That it allows a remote participation to training, and it changes the model from north south to also south south and south north training. If you're interested, uh, you can also follow us, and if you're active on social media, uh, on LinkedIn, on I put my presentations on SlideShare, and we're active on Twitter as well. I would very much like to be able to uh, receive questions. If not through uh, Skype at the moment, um, you can always contact me afterwards by email, or we can have a Skype meeting face-to-face. Uh, Thank you.